Many people are quick to dismiss the old stories that our ancestors have passed down for generations. I've never looked at these stories like they were false. I've always viewed the vast majority of them as something that held truth in some shape or form. And in this video, I'm going to cover what more than likely happened 5,000 years ago. That led to the creation of flood stories that are told by over 150 cultures all around the globe, many of whom were isolated from one another. There have been many flood stories told throughout time, but the one that we know of as Noah's Flood is the one we'll be talking about in this video. There's a scientific explanation for what happened, and it's kind of horrifying. If this event were to happen again, I honestly don't know what humanity would do to try and cope with it. It'd be chaos and pandemonium without a doubt, and all civility would be quickly thrown out the window. And I strongly suspect that armed conflict would prevail as society breaks down altogether. So in this video, we're going to look at the global deluge that occurred after the comet that formed the Burkle Crater smashed into a deep section of the Indian Ocean, and how this event led to a seemingly inexhaustible rainstorm that occurred planet-wide and lasted for between several days to weeks without end. The comet that struck Earth 5,000 years ago and created what we today call the Burkle Crater changed society as we know it. Who knows how many ancient civilizations became undone in a matter of hours after it struck, as the coastlines of every single country in the Indian Ocean got smashed by an almost 200 meter high mega tsunami that was generated when this event occurred. The damage that was inflicted definitely had some immediate and devastating consequences. But the rainstorm that followed is arguably one of the worst parts of this event, as not a single place on Earth was spared from it. We created a huge six-part series on the Burkle Crater Mega Tsunami, where we cover every single country located within the Indian Ocean with a shoreline that got affected, and we document the many hundreds of different points of evidence that exist virtually everywhere. You can find a link to that in the description. But the thing is, the comet responsible for this event split into three pieces either when it entered Earth or before it. The largest fragment landed in the Indian Ocean, and the other two landed in two separate places in the Pacific Ocean, where the rainout from these impact centers overlaps, and we see deluge events that are over a week long. The impact event also produced devastating winds, and the event itself was dated to have occurred around 2807 BC. Many cultures speak of hurricane force winds, water falling at the rate of more than a meter over the course of a few days. And all of these stories have a central theme that revolves around most of the population dying out, with very few survivors existing after the disaster had finally concluded. But how could this happen? Well, when all three fragments of this comet made contact with the ocean, seawater was vaporized en masse to an insane degree. Millions of tons of water got volatized and turned into a gaseous state in an instant when contact was made. It would take days to cool this vaporized seawater, and during that time, the winds generated by these three impacts, along with the normal trade winds that Earth experiences, would spread these clouds of vapor all around the world. And when it finally cooled, well, it would ultimately fall. And fall it did. On its own, the Burkle Crater vaporized enough seawater to cover every inch of the globe. But when it's combined with the two impact events that fell in the northern and southern part of the Pacific Ocean, well, you can see where I'm going with this. But on top of that, many scientists that are researching this impact event also hypothesize that there might have been some effects produced that caused severe atmospheric disturbances, producing rainfall effects that were multiples of the overall amount of water vaporized by the impact. Many of the stories that speak about this event tell about how torrential rainfall and hurricane force winds devastated entire forests and inundated valleys and plains. These stories also talk about how there was no cessation in the event. Several hundred deluge myths are recorded, and they all talk about the same thing, pretty much, with many of them also containing descriptions of the mega tsunami and the heated re-entry ejector that occurred when the material that was catapulted into space by the comet eventually fell back down to Earth. It's more or less certain that the great majority of these myths represent a single event or a simultaneous set of events. On top of this, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are something that we haven't even discussed in the series. But it's likely this impact triggered many of them, 
So who knows what interplay the volcanism had on the climate too. But with all of this being said, I've been doing a bit of extra research and I honestly think the Noah's Flood story might be more strongly associated with the mega tsunami than with the deluge. And I'll explain my reasoning for this in a different video because I want to explore this subject deeper. But so far what I found is kind of mind blowing, at least it is to me, assuming it's correct of course. And on top of this, a commenter told me to check out South America and see if I could find anything there. And my mind was a bit blown by what I saw and I'm probably going to make an episode on this too. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of this and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. So it looks like we need to stop being so headstrong. I see a lot of scientists that are so caught up in their ways that they've lost the ability to keep an open mind. And I see many others who never had that ability to begin with. Science stops becoming science when ego gets in the way. And this is worth noting because many are quick to shrug off the stories that literally generation after generation told for thousands of years. Humans from the past aren't different to humans today. There was a reason we had those stories to begin with. And when hundreds of cultures from completely separate parts of the world have the same story from the same time, we should probably listen and consider it worthwhile to investigate. Thanks for watching.